Hey everyone, welcome back again. This is Neil with Real Train Hobbies. And if you are new to the channel, welcome aboard. Happy to have you on. Go ahead, uh, like and subscribe. And uh, I hope you stick around for the long run. And I just wanted to quickly say, I never really talked about this before, but the goal of the channel here, what I'm trying to do, is not only simply to inspire uh, you to create, but also uh, to help you to level up your skills and increase the level of detail and realism in whatever it is you're choosing to create. So basically what I'm trying to do here is help you gain confidence um, in your builds, break things down that are otherwise complex, break it down into simple steps, and, you know, eliminate the apprehension and perhaps the lack of belief in yourself that you're able to create something complex and realistic and highly detailed. So basically what we're doing here is working through these things together. And if you're willing just to put in a little bit of extra effort into your work, the goal here is to show you that you've got what it takes to create work as realistic uh, as we can make them and that you are also capable of making things uh, that we're doing on here. So having said that, uh, this video is part two of two following last week's video, which is part one. And if you have yet to check that one out, go ahead and click on the link just above. And they were created together and divided into two parts. So following this video in this uh, whole tutorial series for this medieval inner tavern house, uh, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to call it, it's going to be officially an inn and I'm going to have some signs and perhaps the tavern area down in on the main level. But we're going to create one last final video of everything completed. I may do uh, just an update video prior to that one. It's going to take me a couple weeks to get that one out the door. So having said all that, it's time to go ahead and get on with part two of one of last week's video. So let's jump on in. So picking up from where we left off last time in the last video, we're continuing on with the rafter system for level three. And so what I'm doing here is doing the build out for the window. And I have it sticking out about a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch from the uh, building. And so what I did here to uh, make my life easier is assemble this uh, off the building on the side there and uh, glue those pieces together. And while they were still wet, it was okay for me to pick it up and uh, set it into place. And these here are my pieces for the windows on the other side of the roof. And again, I made those out of the quarter inch dowel this time and uh, stained and glued those into place. And these windows are roughly uh, an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half wide uh, for the opposite side. So once I have these windows framed out, I cut the uh, lower jetties and again these are about a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch long and I'm only using the three sixteenths dowel for these uh, windows or smaller windows and so the larger dowel I think would look a little bit out of place so I decided to go with three sixteenths here and I glued those on and then I went ahead and also glued on the three sixteenths uh, roof slats that are going to be again used for the uh, roof boards and the shingles. And it's a simple process for measuring. Line up your piece of dowel, score it with your knife, and cut. And as mentioned in a previous video, I had accidentally boarded uh, this part right across. I was planning on cutting this out for the uh, chimney, uh, but I accidentally I forgot about that and, and put all these uh, board pieces on. So now I'm just cutting that out to make room for our chimney. So I'm just testing things out here, making sure the opening, the chimney opening is going to line up properly with the lower uh, portions of the chimney. And it seems to do that just fine. Um, so I'll go ahead and measure out. We had a two inch wide at the bottom uh, part of the chimney. So I'm actually gonna be creating a 
taper uh, up to the top. And so there's two sides to this chimney. There's the uh, smaller width and then the larger width of the chimney coming up. And I want to taper both of those inwards so it's smaller at the top. But as you'll see, I only tapered in the wider section of the chimney and not the uh, more narrow side. You'll see what I mean in a minute here. Um, but it looked much too bulky to me. And I, so you can see the taper here. But then on the shorter sides, I did not have that taper. Uh, so I later on, after putting some rock pieces on, I decided it just looked much too bulky. And I later put that taper in. But for your benefit, taper both sides and it'll look look much better and if you do, still don't understand what I mean you'll see here in a minute and it's these smaller sections here that I'm talking about you see it's a perfect triangle. I would actually put a taper on these at this point, uh, but I do cut that out uh, a little bit later on. And you can see this hole, the rest of the chimney is going to be attached to our third level and will be separated separate from the fourth. And if you haven't seen before how I make my stone, pieces you just use your fingernail to uh, slowly chip away at the smooth edges to rough them up to make them uh, it gives them that uh, rough stone look and so I'm making the corner pieces here so I cut out a, a perfect square kind of a cube but it's lengthwise it's obviously longer lengthwise and I roughed up two of those edges and then I'm going to be notching out uh, the uh, one corner piece, the one side to this. And this is what I'm going to be using to cut out my corner blocks, as you can see here. And to randomize them up a bit, I made some a little thicker, some a little thinner. And now when gluing them on, you can see that they don't line up perfectly all the way up along the one edge. And what I did there is just uh, rip a little section off the end of one side to make it shorter and then I rotated kind of long short long short and it's the same as well on the other side of the stone piece so we're just filling in the stonework for the rest of the uh, chimney here and if you haven't seen how I made these go ahead and look at video number one if you have not seen that I highly recommend you uh, checking that video out first, it goes through a lot of these uh, processes in a lot more detail. So check that one out if you want to do uh, or get a more detailed look of the stonework. So again, off to the side, uh, I'm making the frames for the windows on the opposite side of the one that we had already created. So I'm gluing those together down here and then I take my knife and uh, kind of jab it in to hold it up and bring it up to the top and glue it into place. And there we have two more windows framed out. And uh, the roof is starting to kind of come together now for level three. Now you can see here where I cut out the side of the chimney with my knife to make it taper up to the top just to give it some added character and flair and not have it quite so bulky looking. Um, so anyway, we're going now with the plaster uh, to fill in the mortar for all those stones. And what I'm using is a hydrocol plaster from Woodland Scenics, but you can use any plaster. A plaster of Paris would work as well. Make it fairly fluid, uh, not too thick, and just put it on top and tap it down so it fills in all the cracks and crevices. And then I take a wet rag to wipe those clean. And from there, I use a sculpting tool to take uh, even more out to give it more definition. And if you don't do that and just use your wet rag, then you tend to lose a lot of the detail and things just look a little too flat. 
and a little too smooth and you lose again a lot of the detail in those rocks. All right, so it's time we move on to level four now. So this is the second peak uh, for the other side of the building. And now I'm uh, working on the rafters. So I cut these pieces to length and uh, just laid them out across a scene here. And for these, I'm gonna cut now a second piece <clears throat> uh, in the opposite direction to go across. And this is gonna be glued straight across and I'll have one of these on both sides. And uh, these pieces will also be glued on to each of the peaks to uh, glue the entire uh, upper structure together. And uh, again, this is all 3 16th for these upper rafters. I didn't go with any of the quarter inch uh, just because that uh, would be a little bulky in my opinion. Um, so 3 16th is what I went with. And then I went with some more roof slats. I'm gluing these on at the top and later on I end up using some safety pins or some uh, sewing pins from my wife to actually hold these in place. I did manage to get this to work without them, uh, but funny enough, I couldn't get them to work on the uh, upper section, which has a slightly less of a slope than this. Um, side here this is quite steep but I was able to get these glued on without those pins but uh, if you're having issues use the pins and so I'm just gluing on the cap now for the chimney and I'm going to be making some clay pipes for the top so I didn't actually cut in a hole here I just put these stones on top mortared it all in and uh but uh like I said I'm going to make some uh clay pipes for the top to give it some added character. And so I'm what I'm doing here is uh, cutting out uh, a piece of uh, 3 16 in half and I'm using this for the trim. And someone had suggested this and it's kind of silly as to why I didn't think of this earlier, but to stain all the pieces and rough them up with a wire brush first before cutting each individual piece uh, because it's just mu that much more of a pain when you have all these little pieces to stain after the fact uh, so do yourself a favor cut or uh, make some uh, longer pieces then uh, add the wire brush on them to get the uh, grain put in stain it and then you cut out your pieces and what I do with the ends of those is just dab like where I make the cuts and it doesn't have any steam, I just dab that onto a cloth and then quickly brush it off uh, to finish it off. So here I'm adding some inner trim to the second floor. And uh, yeah, again, I added the border around the top, which is going to be used to dam in the plaster. So now that we have these roof uh, slats all glued into place. I'm going to be adding or building the truss system. I'm going to have three of these across. And normally you'd have a truss on each one of those joists that uh, go from side to side. But because we want this playable for some miniature tabletop figures, uh, I'm only going to go with three so we have room left up there. And I cut these and made them to, uh, to, to the proper way that actual trusses are made in the real world and uh, so they're able to actually support a roof properly so this is how those are done and if you need help with that look up some references for trusses uh, trusses or joists and uh, if you have any interesting shapes you can kind of look up some ideas on there as to how exactly you can go ahead and create those And so here is the major roof um, truss system 
all in place. Uh, I'm going to be having some floorboards and I'm actually going to, have, of course, be having uh, shingles, uh, some roofing and shingles. I'm going to have some boards for that first and then put the shingles on afterwards. But on the bottom, I'm going to have planks here and there. It's not going to be completely uh, solid. We'll have lots of uh, spaces uh, to see through to the bottom. Actually, probably the majority of it will be that way uh, with the odd planks here and there to put some minis on and to uh, have some playable area up on the top. And just a quick note too, anywhere you see uh, some glue showing on these parts, they're either going to be completely covered up or if they're not going to be, I'm going to uh, uh, use some paint and actually just paint over them to blend it in so it's not going to be uh, very noticeable at all, all said and done. And I'm making the top beam now and again I'm using my knife to uh, shape it up, to rough it up some edges and uh, give it a hewn look. And again, I mentioned this a while back, but hewing is actually the process they used uh, to create boards and beams. It's used with an axe, a really sharp axe, and you take a log and uh, cut off the rounded sides to create these square, uh, square beams. And uh, so those uh, marks in there would give it that character. And again, it's a process called hewing. And I wanted that included in most of these uh, wood pieces that I put on. And as mentioned before, this final little cap for the fourth floor is going to be removable. And so I'm going to have three joist pieces, uh, which I'm putting together right here. And, uh, and then I'll be able to take the, the peak of this off. So you can be, you can uh, see inside the rafter system and have a little hideout for thieves or whatever to sneak around up in there. For now, I only have the two as it's easier to glue it together without things falling apart. And uh, the third one will be added in after the fact. But uh, now these are the pins that I was talking about earlier. And uh, so just simply put the glue on where you need it. And then these uh, rafter pieces just slide on in. These roof slats just slide into place perfectly and rest on those pins so they're not going to be falling off and you're not going to be fighting with it trying to get them glued into place. And now for my interior doors, I wanted them a little bit different uh, than the other exterior doors, namely because I'm not gonna have room for the three eighths, the thicker three eighths uh, solid bass, wood piece bass is a hardwood. I needed that. And you can see that in my doors tutorial, just click again up above. And uh, for those doors, I used some uh, hinges, metal hinges for that. But for these guys, I wanted them all wood and I wanted a different system so my door frames weren't going to be super wide. So I just cut these pieces here and rounded off the two top sides. And then these are going to be sl slotted into both the, the uh, floor and the uh, cap crown piece for the doorway. And uh, you'll see what I mean uh, in more detail later on when I put those in and install them for the interior doors. And it's time to move on for the roof for our room above the uh, jutting out over the staircase. And so all I'm doing here is adding on those cap pieces around the uh, piece of styrofoam, as you can see here. And again, I'm adding in these pins to where I want the uh, roof rafter slats kind of to be sitting in place. So I add those and I'm going to have three on either side with one uh, beam coming across the peak. And so I start off by just balancing. I have two pins in there as well to just hold that peak into place while I glue on these side slats. 
And I'm calling these things slats, as I'm not really sure what to call them. Um, I suppose it can just be uh, rafter pieces. I'm not even sure, but uh, rafter slats, roof slats. <laughs> uh, I don't know. But anyway, you get you get the point. And for the ends uh, of those roof slats or rafters, uh, I rough them up on the uh, with a wire brush. I don't want them nice and flat. They're going to be showing and sticking out. So you want them roughed up a little bit to get out, uh, that kind of worn and weathered look. And then here I just have the wet rag and I dab them into place to have those stained. Uh, so yeah, that's what I was doing there. And so once that is dry, we now have um, our fourth level uh, with the uh, roof section attached that is going over top of our staircase. And next I'm cutting out the window for that. And this I believe is an inch and a half by about an inch and, of a, inch and a quarter wide. So an inch and a half uh, deep, inch and a quarter wide, roughly thereabouts. And so now it's time to add the wood paneling on all the entire side of the third floor the third level there's not going to be any plaster on the third level it's all going to be made out of wood so the siding is all going to be wood so that's what i'm doing here i'm using three uh 1 16th balsa i roughed it up with the a wire brush to add some green in and now i'm staining it with the weathered gray stain and uh, somebody had mentioned using coffee stir sticks and that's a good idea it's the right thing thickness and a width um, the only thing I might not like about that is they're all exactly the same width across and so yeah for me I would still be needing to kind of score them and rough them up with my knife anyway so but if you want to make for some quick um, siding and not have to deal with making and cutting each of these pieces out of balsa you can go ahead and use coffee stir sticks it doesn't take too long to just cut these out of a flat uh, piece of uh, paneling but uh, coffee stir sticks are a great idea they're actually a hardwood as well so they're not as soft as balsa either so they might be a little bit more difficult to uh, cut but they are already cut uh, lengthwise so you know, so you do have that benefit in using them and for these wood slats I'm just going with uh, simple PVA glue I'm not going with any PL premium BL Premium is a lot messier to work with and a little harder, but uh, the well, PVA glue is nice and fast and quick. And these guys aren't anything structural or structure. They're not going to be uh, popping off or coming off in any way. Um, so PVA was all I used on these guys. And that jetty uh, that is sticking out the room that is sticking out over top of the staircase it is going to be a separate room so i need to create a wall with a doorway on that so this beam there going across is going to be where that wall is going and uh, now that these pieces are glued these um, paneling pieces are dried i mean i cut them off and i'm putting some trim along the bottom but actually i'm cutting that trim off on the bottom in a bit here as you'll see i wanted actual proper beams there to look at, make it look as if it was being supported structurally by wood, uh, thick wood beams rather than just this paneling on the side. Um, so I ended up doing that. But for now, I'm uh, putting on the wood trim and I actually, I didn't like these sla uh, slanted angled pieces. It made everything look a little too straight and a little too clean. It didn't look like a, this overhang was a natural part of the house. So I took those off and instead I'm cutting out some uh, round curved pieces again and it sort of kind of makes the building flow a little bit more rather than having too many straight and uh, straight angled pieces. And 
here I'm just creating some uh, nail marks. You uh, stick the knife in and twist it around and then uh, when you stain and wipe the stain away there'll be some extra left inside those little holes and it'll really make the nail marks pop out and uh, give it a really nice look. So this is what I was talking about earlier. I just cut out the trim and notched out a section of the wall as well, or the uh, foam core, and made enough room so I could actually put uh, an actual quarter inch beam into the into place there to make it look like the, the, it was being structurally supported properly. And for this nose piece, I just kept it as a piece of trim rather than an actual beam. It's more the sides that are going to be kind of being held up by the beam running across underneath. Uh, that's part of level one. Uh, so here I just used a piece of trim for the front. And finally for this video, we're going to do one last uh, task and that is going to be putting on the wood planks onto the roof and uh, so to do that I'm going to be using the 1 16th inch uh, balsa dowel or sorry not dowel uh, sheet and uh, so I just cut them into strips and you can leave little spaces in between and all these are going to be serving uh, for is to put on the uh, the shingles on over top of uh, so I sort of shaped the ones in the front, the pieces in the front a little bit, kind of just to get rid of some of the sharper edges, but really you don't have to do too much with these. You're only going to be seeing them uh, from the inside of the building, and uh, otherwise you're not going to be seeing too much of them. And actually I stained both the front and the back, but really I only needed to stain the back end of these. But uh, You'll see on the roof that I actually end up putting some of that are stained only on the one side. But uh, simple enough and uh, it looks kind of funny right now but all said and done the main purpose is to uh, look good from the inside uh, because you actually be seeing those only on the inside and uh, I put those on there rather than a full sheet solid sheet of uh, balsa. Just for the fact, uh, when you look on it from the inside, it'll look that much more realistic. All right, everyone, and that is a wrap for this one. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, stay tuned for next week. I'm guaranteeing you I won't be having the final uh, video completed for this. I'm planning on doing one last video in this tutorial series. Uh, but until then, I'll have an update uh, for the next weekend possibly for the week afterwards, but I'm going to try to have the final video up uh, two weeks from now. All right, so thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, stay tuned, and I'll be seeing you on the next one.